Well, I'm about to say hello. Today we're at Boat Dusseldorf. It is the world's largest boat show, and we're going to take you through a whole bunch of things that you probably haven't seen in the sailing market. So we're going to start off here. We've got Integral. These guys have got some pretty cool stuff going on. Uh, these guys started out basically to try and solve power generation on a boat, and they came up with this quite frankly they came up with this ginormous alternator it's a 48 volt charging system it is absolutely huge it's basically putting out nine kilowatts of power at 48 volts and charging up your lithium system your bank so you can do away with your generator and all that kind of stuff so maybe you've got a dicky generator maybe you're not into generators you've got a smaller boat this kind of alternator solves everything they've also got it sorted so it goes under pretty much every engine that you can imagine so it's not like they've come from nowhere. These guys are accredited with Master Volt, Victron and everybody else. And they've got a whole list of people that they're working alongside. So that's pretty cool. And the other thing they've got over here is some kind of axial flux thing. Hey, George, would you give it a shout? Tell us what this is, mate. Uh, yeah, sure thing, yeah. Oh, hang on a minute. We'll mic you up, actually. Oh, cheers. Well, I, I don't normally do this stuff, so. <laughs> he, so he doesn't normally do this stuff. <laughs> there we go. Right, mate, what we got here, axial flux motor inside a casing exactly. and yep. given the fact you're into charging things it charges things yes all absolutely. i know is it charges at 15 kilowatts that's right so tell me how yep. does it work because this isn't necessarily for electric boats what does it do it's yeah it's a, a true parallel hybrid um you can see on the screen here basically it's designed to go between the engine and the gearbox yeah it generates 15 kilowatts of power when the engine's running when the engine's uh, switched off it can provide that 15 kilowatts in e-drive as a electric propulsion system so it's generator replacement technology, just like the alternator, but also yeah. electric propulsion okay. if you need it. So you can generate by turning on your engine, basically, and exactly. leaving it in neutral, yeah. and it will just power 15 kilowatts. That's it. So it can generate as you're, as you're motoring or uh, at anchor, uh, out of gear. Right. Um, it also actually makes your engine more efficient because it adds load to the engine at cruising RPM. So okay. it uses a bit more fuel, but you get much more value from that fuel. And how about hydro generation? Uh, hydro generation will be possible. Yep. Uh, it depends heavily on the gearbox and what propeller you use. Okay. Uh, so early days with that yet, but we're, we're hoping with the right setup as possible, yep. Okay, so George has been quite calm about this. You've actually got one on your boat and you're running it just as electric. Uh, I don't have one of these, but I, I have an electric boat, yeah, and that does, uh, that does do regen. Um, so if you're sailing long distances, even a small amount of regen 24 7 really adds up to a lot of power okay and that's yeah. what you guys want to aim exactly. towards as well yeah so that's obviously a fantastic piece of kit really really cool what i love about it is the fact you can take your existing motor add this to it ditch your generator everything sorted in one and by the sounds of it these guys are working on sorting out the hydro generation side of it too that's right. which makes it even cleaner it's kind of win 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 and at the worst situation really you got to move your engine mounts back 100 mil to fit it into a standard system. That's it. It's pretty yeah. simple. Yeah. Okay, nice one, George, mate. I'll grab my Good bike. Okay, we're going to shoot on over and see a few other people. Oh, thanks, man. All right, so, as I was saying before, Boat Dusseldorf, largest show in the world, is absolutely massive. We've got 16 halls, absolutely ram full of technology. We're going to take a wander around here and find some more cool stuff. So, excuse me, here we go. I know around here we've got Elstrom. Elstrom have been doing some cool stuff as well. Obviously they're well known for their sales. Their sales costs are fantastic. We've covered their XRP in the last few episodes. So the XRP is a recycled sale, works really well. It actually performs better than the non-recycled sale, but now they're making clothing. And I think, you know, just like North Sales are getting involved, but what's cool about this these guys are remembering Paul Elvstrom. So everything they've got, this hat, for example, has got the coordinates from when Paul started his racing back in the days. So every piece of clothing you buy has got a little remembrance to the man himself. Right, I'm gonna tell you about some rigging stuff now. So let's go and find the boys from Carver and see what they've got. Okay, so these are the guys from Carver. These guys have always got something cool going on. Guaranteed of that, that is for sure. We're going to talk about a pretty simple product of theirs today, and this is a reefing hook. Uh, and that's exactly what this is. Reefing hooks are an interesting thing, and you might think they make no sense to me as a cruiser, or maybe even as a race, you don't get what they are. Let me tell you what's going on. 
So when we look at a boom and the gooseneck at this end, the gooseneck takes an absolute load of hammer and when we look at round the world racing and things like that, the gooseneck is what is usually called a failure and that's the end of the race for those people sometimes. And that can be made a lot better or the chances of having problems slim down a lot by reducing compression in the boom. So when we normally have a reefing line come down here, through the boom, through a whole bunch of sheaves and back, of course we've got a lot of friction, but the second to the friction, what we have is compression. So as we pull tight, we pull the boom and we're pushing that gooseneck into the mast and it's, it's not needed and this is what gets around this. So the way that it works is it has a very, very light Dyneema line here onto a Dyneema loop in the sail. Now this is obviously a little sort of dinghy style kind of stub mast setup, so it's not scale size, but what it stands for still remains. So basically with an average 40 footer, you might only use a four mil, five mil piece of Dyneema because there's no strain on this line. Let me show you how it works. So I'm going to reduce the main halyard or lure this to allow us to reef down on the main. As we do this, I will pull this, which would be led, this line will be led back to the cockpit. So let's pull it, pull it, pull it. And then the hook clips into place. When the hook is clipped into place, we pull on the halyards. And that's that. So now this is loose. This system is not required. The tension is taken on the hook, which is lashed to the boom. So there's no compression in the mast. And we also had no friction, very little friction going on here because it's not tightening up in the same level. So that's a really simple system. And the only other thing we have to do then is have a, a release line, which is then led back to the cockpit too. So why would you want it? reducing the compression here in the boom but second to that we don't have heavy reefing pennants on here so what we don't want let me take this out and show you again pop this out here drop the halyard as if you were going to take a reef out pull the hook and that's it that's the reef shook out there's no fighting tight friction and lines anymore we just lift it up job's done so it's advantage apart from the friction and being able to shake a reef, a reef out reducing the um, compression here is the fact that there's no weight here so all down the leech what we don't want is weight as we add weight from heavy blocks and heavy lines because the other thing is the thing three reefs up you've got a huge amount of weight in that line just reefing line and that's pulling down on these reefing cringles spoiling your light air shape so you just can't sail in light air so for me it's something that I think a lot of cruisers will think, what on earth would you want that for? But to me as a cruiser, it makes perfect sense because light wind sailing means we're still sailing. Light wind motoring, it's just not as much fun. But I like it and I like the fact that it takes a level of complexity away from a reefing system and hopefully helps goosenecks last a bit longer. Anyway, moving on from that kind of technical jargon, for our next uh, product we need to find a prop. And I don't mean the kind of prop well, I do mean a kind of prop. Let's go and find a prop. Okay, so we're talking props right now. And of course, the main thing on everyone's mind is hydro generation. So I want to talk to you in particular about E-Walls line of propellers. Hello, hello. How are you doing, Lorenzo? Just coming to talk about your prop here, my friend. This is an all stainless prop. It's got bronze bushings in it. Of course, this is really exciting because everything is replaceable. So you don't have parts, big parts that wear out, only small parts wear out, which is easier to replace, it's cheaper. Anode on the top, it's all stainless, it's gonna last a long, long time. As with all of the Ewell products, they've got this really, really cool system where it, you're gonna to have to show me how to do this. Which way does it go? Well, oh hell, it's tight. It's a little bit hard. It's, it's really amazing, the strength of the water. It really is, because this is a sprung propeller. So, so basically this propeller will go in this direction when you put force on it from the water, because as the water turns the prop, it creates a twist on the blades. But what's really good is the fact that it springs back into place. Now that means for electric motors or anybody who's got you know, certain gearboxes that require that, this thing is always gonna force itself into the feathering position, which is, you know, super, super low drag. The other thing with this prop is very, very thin. Because it's so thin, 
you've got less drag again. But the wonderful thing about this one, it's got a regen position. There you go. And when it goes into reverse, it stays in that position, which means that the pitch on the propeller is perfectly set up for hydro generation. So it allows you to spin that motor all of the time. So you don't need any mechanical pressures or hydro, sorry, any hydraulics or anything like that. No electronics inside there. It just works purely by putting it into forward. And then in the reverse, it flips into this and then you can hydro generate as well as go backwards. But I still can't quite get over how much pressure the water generates because we've seen videos of this thing where it just the water just flips it around like that. It's amazing. Renzo, thanks for your time, mate. No worries. Cheers now. No, no well, yeah. We're off to find another prop on that note. See you later. But this prop is uh, probably not the prop you're thinking about. Can I pinch one? Yeah. The black one, yeah. What's the PSI these need to be blown up to? Uh, PSI is about 5 to 6 PSI, that's minimum. 5 to 6? Yeah. Minimum? Yeah. Right, that's a test for the next thing, eh? <laughs> See you in a bit. Okay, so obviously this is a fender and it's, it's the fender takes out the blow up, but um, oh, hang on a minute. While we're here, hey, these guys from a mayor have had something pretty cool going on. So maybe, where's it gone? Here it is. It's hidden out of the way of all things. So if you're looking at putting wiring into your boat or something like that, and you don't want to go drilling holes and finding ways like this, these guys have got this really cool digital switching thing going on. So you can have up to eight switches on it, or you can just have one, whatever you want. It's pretty cool. You can also even put it in as a dimmer, so you press and hold. It's a pretty cool system if you don't want to drill holes. Anyway, I think it's time we cracked on and blew this thing up. So next up, we're shooting off to Scanstra. They've got something on the market, a little bit different for them, I think. Let's go for it. Okay, so next up we've got these guys at Scanstra, and of course they're well known for their electronics. But we're going to show you this, which is uh, effectively a fender pump, a dinghy pump, a uh, SUP pump. So I'm going to make sure I've got this correct. That's the one. Pump the fender takes up. If you haven't seen these, we've got another episode about fender takes fenders. Pretty cool. Turn on this system. It's a twin pump system, so it inflates things super quick, which means it uses a lot less power because it's doing things very quickly. So it's got a, a low pressure, high volume, and then it finishes off with a high pressure at a, a low volume. Is that right? Something like that. So set pressure, yes please. Set it in PSI, that sounds good. Five and a half PSI, that's what they say. Confirm that. Okay, so let's see how she goes. First stage. Okay, and that's the second stage up. She's at just around five and a half PSI there. So, super quick system, shut up. There we go. So, it clearly works really well, and I do like it, but what I like about it better than anything, for me, is it doesn't use that much power. It draws eight amps of power. Sounds like a lot, but the reality is, you know, that's, sorry, that's eight amps at 12 volts. But the reality is, that's not much power when you think about how long that actually took. So the other thing which I really do like about it is that we can deflate it like this, obviously. There she goes. And we can set this system onto a deflate. Which, of course, if you've got SUPs or a dinghy, that's wonderful because when you start deflating something, it gets a lot, lot smaller. Okay. Confirm that. We should go. Okay, so... That's it. So that's completely deflated. So there's an auto switch off as well. So when it's deflating, if it's left in that mode for a while, it's something like after a minute, it closes down. And likewise, the screen closes down as well. So yeah, really cool system. And I think 
We'll see a lot on catamarans, bigger monohulls and stuff like that. All for lazy people like me on monohulls, which are just average sized. Hey ho, moving on. So, and I want to show you a motor now. There's loads of electric motors on the market at the moment, as you know, but I think the thing with this one is, it's actually the first of its type. They won some fancy great big award. I can't remember what it was, but it's, it's pretty prestigious. The company's called Romigo. They're right here. I'm just going to take you through their, their basic settings, what they've got and what makes this system a little bit different. Still cutting this bender around. So this is the Romigo. I mean, you can see how it's been copied so many times. It's super slim, really hydrodynamic. It acts as a rudder when you're not actually even using it as a motor. Adjustable in height, anodes on the bottom, beautifully welded alloy construction, lithium batteries, which are integral to the system and it's completely waterproof. It's got a cool system on it where this is locked so you could put it on something like, a, um, I don't know, a small mono and have it in place like that or a try or a cat or something. Lift the handle, that's it. And it, now you can steer it, it's, it's super simple. It's really, really well thought out. The handle doubles up as a carrying handle, straightforward kind of trailer hitch. It's something we all understand. It's dead simple. And that's kind of why these guys are being copied so much. So we'll just pop off the magnetic catch. We'll pop this off. And the beauty of it is, is that you can flip it around like that. And based on ergonomics, it's just super easy to carry, easy to walk around with, charging port on the top. Other thing with it is, while you've got the charging point, you can actually plug a solar array directly into it. You always have been able to. You can power it completely off solar, or you can charge the batteries via the solar. Or you could use a 12 volt system, or you could use any other voltage system you want to charge this thing. It's pretty well set up. So there you go. There's one kilowatt motors and there's one kilowatt motors. Other thing I find interesting about it, the button's on the top. That's kind of like cruise control. There is no adaptive kind of twist, which means that as you turn, you don't speed up and slow down, but it also means you're more conscious of how long your battery's gonna last. So you just plug and play with the buttons. Really cool like that. And the new thing they've got, which I haven't actually got, and I don't see it lying around here, it's a remote control. So if you have got it on the back of a cat or a back of a mono, and you're using your normal helm to steer, you can control the speed from anywhere you want to go. So, let's see what else we can find as well, eh? Oh, I forgot my fender. Cheers, guys. Okay, so electric motors are obviously something which is definitely happening now. I mean, it, they're just everywhere. A propulsion here, massive stand. They got so much going on. These guys pretty much have a new product every time we see them. And of course, Boat Dusseldorf, they're gonna have a one. They've got a brand new one on. And we'll be doing a little video about that coming up shortly too. The guys at Lumar, these guys, I've obviously got their winches and their hatches and all that kind of stuff. They've actually now extended that warranty from, I think it was five years. And now it's getting all the way through to a lifetime. So it's a full lifetime warranty on Lumar winches. And we're off now to see the final product of the video. And this is of course a motor, it's an electric motor. It's from a company that we've done a lot of work with in the past. And I really like the style. I really like what they do. Always thinking outside of the box. And it is of course Timo. Let's go and see what they've got going on. Okay, so Timo 450, as it was, the standard version, it's been upgraded. They've changed it around a little bit, lost a little bit more weight from it, but what's most important is they've actually managed to get 20% more power into it. So the duration is so much better than it used to be. And of course, just to finish it off, it's kind of the blingest thing they've got in. I've seen one here on the steel. So maybe blue's not your color, or maybe you just fancy a bit of something swanky. Carbon fiber, 20% more battery, and yeah, pretty cool system. So that's it really. Hope you've enjoyed that, and uh, I hope you found something new and something interesting. Hello, Tebow. Hey, <laughs> good, good to see you. 
these guys are always good fun there's no question about that so yeah that's Timo hope you've enjoyed the episode we'll catch you next time do remember to like and subscribe follow the channel it really does help us get to the boat shows bring this stuff to you and uh, yeah let's see if I can shifty one of these